Thanks for visiting my channel. This is my first video and I find it very appropriate for it to be the first because it's the question I get asked the most. Can you show me how to make a good caramel cake? Well, up until this point, I've never been able to find a video tutorial that was simple, to the point, and told everything that needed to be told about how to make caramel icing. I was given a recipe from my mother and I also found a recipe online somewhere after hours of searching that made sense to me. So I adapted the two together, figured out how to make it. Honestly, the first time I attempted it, it was successful. So I don't know if it's luck or if it's just that I found a good recipe, I followed the instructions, and now I've been able to kind of perfect the um, process. And so I just definitely wanted to share it with all of you who are searching the same way that I was for a caramel icing and caramel cake recipe that would taste like something our grandmothers made, our great grandmothers made, whatever. It's a dying art, these cakes. So I'm really, really happy um, that I've been able to figure out how to do them. So the rest of the video will just be the tutorial. I hope that it helps you. Um, I hope that you're able to follow along with the steps. If you have any questions, I would be so happy to answer them. I hope that I've covered everything. Um, I've tried to answer the questions that I was asking whenever I started doing it. I do wanna make a couple of really great points. First one is I use a very dense cake. A lot of people use just like a regular yellow box cake mix for a cake. Um, in my opinion, those are a little bit too delicate of a cake for a really heavy caramel icing. So, I mean, caramel icing obviously is going to be a lot thicker and a lot more dense than like a whipped icing. Um, mine is sturdy, but it's going to melt in your mouth. So you're not going to be able to like cut a piece of this cake and break a piece off. There are caramel cakes that are like that. I've had them. They're not my favorite. First of all, they don't have a really rich caramel flavor. Um, second of all, they're a little chalky to me and just don't have that consistency that I want. Like I want a cake that I'm gonna be able to cut through and it still has a little bit of give to it. That's the way this icing is. Um, and I'll leave my cake recipe below. It is more of a pound cake. I've had so many compliments on the pairing. Um, so I really think it'll be something that you'll wanna pair together. This cake is um, three six inch layers. This was a specific request. The recipe is for two eight inch layers and the icing, although you won't think it will, it will cover the entire thing. A little goes a long way with the icing. You'll see that as I'm decorating this one, as I'm getting the icing on it, the very littlest bit will fill in the biggest hole. It's, it's incredible. So I hope this is helpful. Again, if you have any questions, please leave them. I'll be happy to get back with you. I'll be happy to answer as many questions as I can. So you don't need a lot. You don't need a lot of ingredients. You just need a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, and you'll be able to make a beautiful caramel cake. Thanks. Okay, so let me explain what we've got here. In this cast iron skillet, this is a black cast iron skillet. It's a small one. I happen to have a small one. If you have a large one, you can use a large one. Um, in this, we have a half a cup of sugar. And in this saucepan, we have two cups of sugar. So total, it's two and a half cups of sugar, half in here, two in here. Nothing is turned on yet. The timing is extremely important because you don't want this to start boiling before this is ready. One thing I've learned is if you pour this in, and a lot of recipes are gonna tell you, let this pot come to a boil and then pour in the caramelized sugar. And I have found that that does not work. Um, it crystallizes when you do that. So what I try to do is get all of my ingredients into this pot before I do anything. So here's what we're gonna do. In this pot with the two cups of sugar, we're gonna add one cup of heavy whipping cream. And we're going to add one half cup, which is one stick of, I use salted butter. 
A lot of recipes are gonna tell you to use unsalted butter, but I use salted in almost everything and I just eliminate the salt from um, the recipe. So here's what we're gonna do. So we're good here. Um, we're gonna turn this on so that it gets hot, but we don't want, again, we're gonna have to keep an eye on this. This is where I think people get messed up. Keep an eye on this so that it doesn't start to boil too quickly. Now, we're gonna turn the um, cast iron skillet on to medium high heat. Now, this is gonna happen pretty quickly. Um, an essential, item to have for this recipe is a candy thermometer and you're going to want one that has a little foot on the end so that you can just stick it down in your pot you don't have to worry about it not touching because if this touches the bottom directly you're not going to get an accurate reading of your ingredients you're only going to get the reading of the bottom of the pan which is not going to be right so what we're trying to do is measure this first. So we're gonna let it sit for a minute, get kind of warm. And um, we want this to get to 320 degrees Fahrenheit. So I kind of like to let it get itself started a little bit before I start piddling with it. Cause one of the problems you can have is you can get sugar that'll collect around the edges of this pan and they'll start to burn. And that's when you get that burnt caramel taste, which is not what you're going for. So um, I try to use like a really small rubber spatula, like this one works really well, just to kind of keep things going. You don't want any spot to be um, sitting for too long, anything like that. Um, I wanna go back to this pot for a second. I have many, many, many times put a cold stick of butter in there and it just ends up taking longer than I would like for it to all get melted. So I have just set that stick of butter out all day um, at room temperature and you can kind of see it's... Okay, so I've grabbed another spatula for this and I'm just gonna kind of work it together, all of this in there. It's gonna be pretty gloopy at first. Um, just as it starts to melt. Again, just keep an eye on it. I have this on just a little bit higher than medium right now. You're gonna want it to get really hot, so it's not that you don't want it to get hot. I just have found that the one time that my icing has crystallized, and I've done this a lot, um, it crystallized because, I, or I feel like it crystallized because I let this boil first. So. You'll know. Okay, so back to this. It is a multitasking event here. Okay, you see how it's starting to get wet underneath there? That is because the sugar is melting. And you're gonna start seeing the sugar get clumpy and that means that it's starting to melt and that's a good sign. It doesn't take all that long after you it starts melting. So that's when you wanna maybe hike the heat up on this one, um, just to make sure everything's good and melted in there. So I'm gonna turn it up almost to high. I'm just gonna let this keep doing its thing. Again, I'm gonna try to scrape the outside edges as much as possible. Um, might even turn this up just a little. Don't be afraid to adjust your temperatures up and down as you see things maybe going too fast, going too slow. A lot of times people get stuck on what a recipe says and they'll say, what well, it says medium high. It's like, well, yeah, but it, what it really means is don't start it out at high because you're gonna get, you're gonna be a little bit too quick to get it to melt. So see how it's starting to crystallize like that? It's exactly what you want it to do. It's just starting to do its melting. When it starts getting like this, I try to pay more attention to this than I do that because that's just gonna kind of do its own thing. But I also don't want to scorch the um, 
whipping cream over here. So you, if you work with milk at all, you know that that can be a problem. So you never wanna get it so high that it starts to scorch. And you'll know when it starts to scorch because it'll smell. So just don't let that happen. So see how that's melting over there? That's good, that's doing good. And this is doing well over here too. So I'm feeling good about both of these things at the same time. There it comes, look at that. Okay. Now I'm gonna turn this back down to medium because the skillet's very hot. If you, have, if you work with a cast iron skillet at all, you know this whole thing gets hot, even the handle. I just don't want any of it to burn. So pay attention, use your senses, your, your sense of smell um, to be able to tell if it's starting to get too brown too fast. So I know you're like, but what about the thermometer? See, that's starting to get really warm. Um, the thermometer is gonna happen once all of this has melted which we're close. And you wanna kinda of keep it, you know, spread out to where it's evenly melting. And once it starts, once it gets to this point, oh, it's turning such a pretty color. That's exactly what's supposed to be happening. Um, once it gets to this point, and again, I'm still just here at medium. I'm not any higher than that, because this skillet is just gonna be such a good conductor of heat that you, and it stays hot for a while. Um, so I'm gonna let that sit for just a millisecond while I come over here and see what's happening. I feel really good about this over here. All the butter's melted. Again, it just melts so much faster if you have it at room temperature, okay? I feel good about this. So I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna like, turn this up a little bit um, cause we're almost to the point. Okay. I want to, I want to point out something. See how, if you can see how that's turning like a lighter color in there, that's really, really good. That's what we want it to do. Now here's where you gotta make sure it's all melted. Now what I do is I tilt my little skillet up. I make sure all of it comes this way. I'm gonna knock that off, set it over there on something it's not gonna stick to, and then I stick my thermometer right down in there. Look, we're, we're boiling over here, which is great, but I am gonna turn it down because I would like for it to not be doing that when my caramel goes in it. And that's such a light bowl, it should be fine, but I'm turning it almost to low. I might even kind of take it off and shake it for a second. So this is going up. Again, we're trying to get it to 320 degrees. Turning that down again. And I've done this too. I'm gonna to take it off the burner. I don't want it to be doing that when I put this in. Um, good, good, good. So we're at 260 degrees and rising. So I'm gonna let it, look at that. See that color, see how thick it looks? It just looks really dark and rich. Okay, I'm gonna let it slide back down again. Put this back over here. We are, again, at 260 degrees. And I don't, because I've got it tilted up and off the burner, I'm not terribly concerned about it burning. Um, here we go with that again. So we know we're ready here. This is really good because I'm gonna take it off of the heat until this is ready. Um, and then I'll, I'll pop it back on there and we'll pour this in. So I'm not terribly concerned, again, about, um, this burning because it's not even touching the burner. It's getting generating all of its heat from the skillet itself. Um, we're at 300 degrees, we've got 20 degrees to go and it's gonna happen really, really quick. Um, we're at 310, so we've got 10 degrees. That color is exactly what you're looking for. It almost turns like a white color. 
And again, I'm gonna just go ahead and turn that off. We're not even really on that. Okay, we're, at, we're almost at 320. So I'm gonna put this back on. I have it on low right now, but I don't want it to stay on low. Okay, so we're gonna just transfer all of this over because we're gonna need, look at the way that caramel did. We're gonna need the thermometer over here too. So we're just gonna like set that on there. Gonna get our spatula that's stuck to whatever we've, and we are going to pour this, oop. Okay, let me turn that back down. Back down, back down, back down. It's on low. Okay, and we're gonna, I don't want this to, let me take this off of here. And now I'm gonna pour it in. And that's exactly what you want it to do. See how it's bubbling like that? That's perfect. So we're gonna scrape all that good stuff in there. Now, we're gonna pop this back over here. We've got our um, thermometer in here. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll turn it that way. We're gonna stir all this together. I'm actually gonna stir it first. Stir it together. Get it to be one kind of cohesive um, thing here. It's a pretty color. It looks really good. It looks really good. So I'm gonna turn this heat back up. Um, I'm gonna slide this down and stick it on there. So this is going to sit um, and we're gonna cook it over medium heat. We're only gonna stir it once or twice. Like I have a problem of wanting to keep it stirred because I'm afraid it's gonna do something. So I'm gonna give it one good scrape along the bottom right now because I just don't, I wanna make sure that none of that caramel is stuck. I wanna make sure that none of that um, cream is, that looks really good. Um, none of that cream is scorching. So I've, I've scorched it before. I've made two bad batches in every one that I've made. One caramelized, I meant crystallized. It was delicious, but it crystallized. And the other scorched on the bottom. And it was, I was rushing, I was trying too hard. It was a weird thing. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit. That's exactly what you want it to look like right now. I mean, I could leave that in there to melt if I really felt like I needed to leave that in there to melt. But. So the hardest part is over. Getting the sugar from here to here in the right manner is gonna be your hardest part. So let me move this out of the way and we're gonna let that sit and we're gonna let it boil until it gets to uh, 232 to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. It um, on your thermometer will say softball stage. So that's what we're waiting on. Okay, I wanna say something really quick before I forget. I had to turn the thermometer around so I could see it because I didn't want it to overdo. You're gonna see that when you cook it, it's gonna get to like 220 to 230, like super fast. And then it's gonna kind of plateau out at, um, it always does this for some reason, around, eh, around 230, 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it absolutely just like kind of sits for a minute. Um, sometimes I'll fiddle with the knob to get it to go. That's about the time though when it's like, when I look at it and I'm like, oh, is it ready? I just wanna stir it again. And this is when, this is, you're gonna know at this point if it's crystallized or if it's stuck to the bottom. This one has done beautifully. Another point I wanna make is, oh, look at that. Love it. A lot of people say, well, you can't do it when it's humid, y'all. I live in the South, Mississippi to be exact, and it is currently 76 degrees, and it's been raining cats and dogs for the last couple of hours. The humidity is 100%, there's no way it's not. And 
I just haven't found that I have a problem with that. Um, okay, so we're slowly creeping up. If you could see this, which you can't, um, we're at about 238 and we're trying to get to 240. So technically we could take it off right now, but I found that I like to wait until it hits that line on the um, thermometer that says softball. Um, so we're almost there. I am gonna turn this up just a little bit to just kind of persuade it and that's fine for you to do. Don't turn it all the way to high, but if you wanna creep it up just a little higher then, okay, so there we go. So I'm gonna turn this off I'm going to remove this from the burner. I'm going to set it on a rack because you want it to be able to get some air to be able to cool off. Take my thermometer out. Okay, two teaspoons of vanilla. It's gonna react to the alcohol um, and you'll see that here in just a second. It's gonna fizzle, fizzle, pop, pop. Two teaspoons of vanilla. And there we go. We're gonna give it a good stir. Now, if you did, if you used unsalted butter, which have at it, if you like that better, I have no problem with that. This is where you would also add your salt. So as you can see, it looks beautiful. Super, super pretty. Super happy with this. Um, just, it's a really pretty color. You can tell by the way it smells that it's not overcooked or anything like that. Okay, so we're gonna let this sit for 10 to 15 minutes, just as is. You don't need to do anything else to it. You don't need to stir it. You don't... Okay, I waited 15 minutes. Um, Because you want your, you want to make sure it's still warm. It's one of the mistakes that I made when I first started doing this is that I waited too long. I will let my caramel um, cool too long. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour this into a mixing bowl of a large stand mixer. You can do this by hand with a hand mixer, not by hand, but with a hand mixer. I personally have tried that and it was terrible because you have to do it for so long, but you know, if that's all you've got, then go for it. But you can see the consistency of that. That's great. So we're gonna put it on the stand mixer with a whisk attachment and we're gonna let it whisk for five minutes. Okay. So I've done, I'm done whisking it. You can kind of tell when it's ready because it's gonna start to kind of come away from the sides a little and you're gonna wanna act fast with this. So once it's at the right consistency, which I don't know how I know, I, I, I hate to say that, um, just instinct will kind of help you with that. We're gonna spread this on here. I'm doing a little six inch cake. That was what was requested. We're just gonna get as much of this on here as we can. In the middle, we're gonna put our second layer on, on top of that. Do the same thing. This got a little cooler than I would like for it to. Um, usually, the best is when it's just a little bit warmer than this, but it's still, it's still fine because it's spreadable. You can see that that's spreading. Stick into the cake, it's fine. We're gonna put our last layer on upside down so it'll be good and square on the top. And this is where I like to act as fast as I can on the top. I actually work on the top before I work on the sides. Um, got all sorts of timers going off. Okay, so I'm gonna, I want a good heaping on the top. Actually, this is really the perfect consistency for the top of this. See how it's gonna droop off the sides? Like I want it to do that. 
The reason I like for it to be this consistency when I do the top is because I want to be able to get a good swirl um, for decoration because there's not a lot of ways to decorate a caramel cake. Um, and then we'll just start with the sides. And I want to say this too. Caramel icing is actually a lot more forgiving than you think. Um, and I'll probably be able to demonstrate that here in a minute. So look, I mean, this is all just kind of coming off and I know you're like, well, Crystal, that doesn't look great. But again, it's gonna be very forgiving. Let me just get it covered really quick and I'll show you what I mean. The more you work with it, the cooler your icing is gonna become and the harder it's gonna be to spread. That's just very normal. Okay, so when I mentioned that caramel icing is very forgiving, I know you're like, Crystal, it's not. Like once it's ruined, it's ruined. But my icing is the perfect consistency, okay? Right now, the top is beautiful. Like, I'm not gonna touch the top because I did it while it was cool and it was perfect. The reason that it's forgiving is, as you can see, the sides are a little rough. Um, if you'll just take your offset spatula, I would recommend having an offset spatula. Put it in a cup of water for just a second. Take it and run it around your cake you're gonna get a really nice smooth side. You see that? It literally is like magic. You'll be able to fill in your holes because what happens is your spatula gets sticky and it sticks to the sticky caramel and it just kind of pulls it away. Um, and the water is not gonna do anything to the icing. Like it's not gonna mess it up. It's not gonna mess with the taste or anything like that. So I am going to smooth this out with my spatula and then I'm gonna fill in my holes. Okay, so I've got some holes over here. See these beauties? Um, I've got enough icing over here and a little icing goes a really long way. So I'm literally just gonna like spackle it in there. I'm not gonna do anything to it. If I'm running low on icing, I'm just gonna scrape it as much as I can. Fill in these holes literally like I'm spackling like a hole in a wall. Nothing elegant. I just wanna get the icing into the holes. So wherever I can see cake, I want icing to be. And again, I mean, some of this is just that little of an amount and I'm just sticking it on there. It's ugly right now, but it will not be because of what we're gonna do. Stick, stick, stick. Okay, look how ugly that is. I mean, seriously, look at that. So I'm gonna wipe my spatula off, my offset spatula off. I'm gonna dip my offset spatula in the water. And the water doesn't have to stay hot, it's fine. Um, it's just the water itself helps. And I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna smooth out those places where I added that icing. And it does not need to be perfect. Like you do not want your caramel cake to look like it came off an assembly line. That's the whole point of this cake is that it's old, southern recipe that taste and look like something that your grandmother made or your great-grandmother made anywhere that it looks rough just run that wet spatula around it <laughs> 